hello everyone welcome to this video and in this video we are going to learn about rotary encoders and servo motors in this video we will control a servo motor with the help of rotary encoder and please watch my previous video in which i have explained in great details about interfacing the incremental rotary encoder with the raspberry pi pico and in this video we are going to look at the application part of that video so treat this video as an extension of the previous video and uh, here in this video we are using three interrupts to monitor the state of the rotary encoder two interrupts are used to monitor the direction of rotation of the encoder and the third interrupt will be used to monitor the onboard switch of the rotary encoder so first let me tell you about the circuit diagram so this is the circuit diagram this is the rotary encoder and the positive pin is connected to the 3.3 volt of the raspberry pi pico and this pin is connected to the ground of the raspberry pi pico the switch pin of the rotary encoder is connected to the gpio number 16 and the clk and dt pins they are connected to the gpio 17 and 18 respectively this is the same circuit diagram which we have used in the previous video and the only difference is in the gpio number 15 which is used to generate the pwm signals and these pwm signals are connected to the servo signal wire which is in most of the cases the yellow wire of the servo motor and this is connected to gpio number 15 and the other two wires of the servo motor are connected to 5 volt DC supply and the ground of some external battery and please make sure to connect the external battery's ground signal with the Raspberry Pi Pico's ground connection to make a common ground reference voltage and so now let us run the MicroPython script and watch the code in action so now I have run the script and now I have now I will rotate the encoder so this is incrementing a counter so now the counter is at 30 and if I will press the button the servo will turn to 30 degree as you can see and now I will increase the counter to 90 degree Now when I will press the button, the servo will go to 90 degree. As you can see, the servo is now at the 90 degree. This marked horn of the servo. I can decrease the counter. This is 51 degree. Now I will increase the counter to 120 degrees and I will press the button. Now I will increase the counter to 180 degree and I will press the onboard button of the encoder module and the horn will go to 180 degree. So in this way we can control the servo from 0 degree to 180 degree and I have coded in such a way that if you increase it to beyond 180 degree the servo will remain at 180 degree see angle moved is still logged on to 180 degree and you can decrease it this is 140 degree from this this position is the 0 and this position is the 180 degree you can further decrease it so 89 degree this is 29 degree now this is 0 degree now if we give negative values because the counter if we rotate it anti-clockwise will start incrementing in the negative direction so if we give negative value the servo will still remain at the 0 degree see the angle moved is still 0 degree 
so this is like a fail safe mechanism because we do not want to turn the servo where the servo cannot physically turn because of the mechanical construction so this is the demonstration and so now let me stop the execution of the code and let me tell you about the micro python script so if you haven't watched my previous video please go and watch that video in which i have told you everything about the rotary encoder and how to interface it with the raspberry pi pico this code is similar is exactly the same as the code in the previous video and so first you have to import the required libraries you will import pin and pwm for generation of pwm signals and micro time then you have to declare two variables which are required for controlling the pwm output if you want to learn more about pwm there is one video in my playlist you can watch that so first is the frequency and you have to set it to 50 hertz because most of the bldc motors and they run at 50 hertz but you have to change it according to your manufacturer's specification and then make a second variable that is pwm duty cycle and initialize it with zero that is zero percent duty cycle now you have to make encoder pins you have to define encoder pins so this is the code from the previous video you have to uh, declare three pins one for switch second for output a and third for output b these two outputs are the output of the rotary encoder output a is the clk pin and output b is the dt pin the code is exactly same so this is how you are going to create a servo object so first you have to declare the pin in which you will connect the servo so this is pin number 15 this is the pin for the pwm output now you have to make a servo object so you have to use this pwm constructor and pass this pwm pin as the argument and this will define a servo object now you have to set the frequency of the servo so you will use servo object dot frequency and pass this frequency which is equal to 50 hertz this has to be in an integer now this will set the pwm frequency now this is the portion from the previous code you have to define some global variables which are used for monitoring the interrupts first is counter you have to initialize it with zero it will update every time the encoder rotates direction and leave it an empty string it will point to the direction of rotation that is clockwise or anti-clockwise this is the last state of the output a pin set it to zero this is the output a pins current status set it to zero and these are for button last state and button current state buttons last state has to be false in the initialization phase of the program and now make another variable that is button pressed and set it to false these will be used in monitoring the interrupts and this button pressed will be used to monitor if the onboard button on the encoder is pressed by the user now read the last state of clk pin and this logic is same as the previous so i will not explain here please go and watch my previous video so here you are measuring the last state of the clk pin and now you have to define the interrupt handler functions this is the same as the previous one encoder and button these two are the same that we have already discussed in the previous video and now you have to attach the interrupts to the pin this code is also same as the previous one now only difference is this function angle so the this function will convert the encoders rotation value to corresponding duty cycles and that corresponding value of duty cycle is used for generation of the pwm signals so this function is taking a parameter counts and this counts is nothing but the encoder clicks like how many clicks the encoder has turned now if the encoder clicks is more than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 180 that is this is the valid range of 0 to 180 degree you will set angle degree equal to the encoder clicks so if the encoder has clicked 
30 pulses so you will set the angle degree to 30 degrees now you have to convert this angle degree into the corresponding duty cycle and because the micro python and raspberry pi pico uses a 16 bit conversion so they are the full range of PWM will be from 0 to 65,025. Now you have to convert it to MicroPython range of 1952-7803. And this will correspond to the duty cycle of 3% to 12% at 50 Hz of frequency. Because most of the BLDC motors and servo motors, they will operate from 5% of the duty cycle to 10% of the duty cycle. In this case, we are generating pulses of 3% to 12% as a factor of safety. So this line of code will convert the angle in degrees to the corresponding duty cycle. And you have to vary it according to your own servo motor or BLDC motor. Now you have to return these two parameters. First one is the duty cycle which you have generated and the second one is the angle rotated in degree and this will be returned if the encoder clicks is more than 0 and less than 180. In other case you will use this LF statement LF encoder clicks is less than 0 that means if the user is rotating the encoder in the anti-clockwise direction and the counter is set to negative so you will return this duty value this duty cycle that is corresponding to zero degree rotation so this is the duty cycle in and else you will return this duty cycle that will correspond to 180 degree of angle rotation and now this is the main logic of the pro program so you will make an infinite loop while true first give some time delay for the interrupt routines to settle down and for the interrupt to work properly and now I have given one second of time delay you can reduce the value to make the servo response even more quicker now first step is to get the PWM duty cycle to get the PWM duty cycle you have to call this angle this function angle and with the parameter of counter this counter is the global variable which we have already discussed in the previous video and this is initialized to 0 and if the button pressed is true it means if the user has pressed the onboard button of the encoder now you have to set the PWM duty cycle so you will use this method duty underscore u16 u stands for unsigned integer and this is a built in method in the PWM class and you have to pass the PWM duty cycle which the angle function will return you so and you have to apply this method on the servo object so this line of code will set the duty cycle of the servo object and the corresponding PWM signal will be generated at GPIO number 15 and at the last you have to print how many how much angle the servo has rotated so you will print the value of this variable and this will also be returned by the angle function call and then in the last you have to set this button press to false and now to avoid multiple button presses registration with interrupts the button last state is set to false this will prevent multiple false registration of the interrupt this line of code is explained in the previous video so i highly recommend you to go and watch that previous video and i will upload the code in the description and i will also upload the link to the previous video so i hope this will help you and thank you very much for watching the video